All right. Uh, by now, everyone uh, who isn't living under a rock has heard that Amazon, based in Seattle, is now looking for a second national headquarters here in the United States. They've uh, put out an RFP for what they're referring to as HQ2, their second headquarters. And if you look at it, uh, on two of their criteria, uh, on the surface it appears the city of Madison does not qualify. And I want to discuss those two points uh, for starters. Um, I've distributed to you the, uh, the document, and if you look at the first page, uh, the very first bullet says metropolitan areas with more than one million people. Well, there's a little more than 50 metropolitan areas in the United States right now, close to 60, um, which have metro areas with a population of a million or more. And there's probably another 30 or so, like Madison, who don't quite get there. But if you look at the intent of what Amazon is doing, uh, we think we can qualify. Uh, our metro area has a, a population of 866,000 when you, you combine our CSA with Janesville Beloit. There are two significant counties, Dodge and Jefferson, who are not technically in our area, but yet are right next door. And each of them have populations of about 85,000 or more in between the two counties and, and, and the rest of the metro area, we're at a million. And so we're not going to let that be an impediment to making an application. If you go to page two of the requirements and you look at the site requirements, the second one in the box says proximity to international airport within approximately 45 minutes. And it's true we don't have international flights out of Madison, but as we'll document in our submission, we've got a tremendous number of flights, direct flights, to three cities with uh, numerous international flights, and those are Minneapolis, Detroit, and Chicago. And without counting Chicago, uh, that gives us access uh, to London, to Paris, to Mexico City, to Tokyo, uh, Frankfurt, Rome, uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. And so when you look at the convenience of those airports, travel times to them, whether uh, with connecting flights or uh, ground transportation, particularly to Chicago with bus service, we think we're in pretty good shape and we can rival metro areas that have direct links. Now, as you go through the, uh, uh, the application, I want to just highlight a couple of things and I want to get to uh, the substance of it. The second set of bullets on page one, it could be but doesn't have to be an urban or downtown campus. And obviously we've got sites downtown which include uh, old industrial areas on East Washington Avenue, as well as the most obvious, which is Oscar Mayer. Uh, if you look at uh, page two, where they go into core preferences, access to mass transit, and they're looking for direct access to rail, train, subway, metro, and bus routes. And obviously, we've got one of the most viable bus systems in the United States. If you look at page four, um, if you look at page four under capital investment, the very last sentence, also include connectivity options, sidewalks, bike lanes, trams, etc., to foster connectivity. And I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. Well, there's more on connectivity in the very uh, bottom paragraph ensuring optimal fiber connectivity, which is paramount to our HQ2 location. And you know, we've got 
uh, our muffin nut network. Now, if you, you go through this document, uh, it's going to be a very competitive process. There will be dozens, if not close to uh, 60, 70 metro areas uh, supplying applications. We will formulate ours. We're going to have a staff meeting on this next week, and we'll continue to work and refine it uh, over the next three weeks and, and meet the deadline in October. And we will obviously do this in collaboration uh, with our partners, namely um, the uh, MADREP, our, our regional economic organization, and in conjunction, hopefully, in cooperation with the state of Wisconsin. Now, I do want to say uh, that we've been de dealt two very severe blows to making this successful by the state, and one of them is pending right now. And it's, it's really tragic uh, that we haven't had leadership in the legislature and in the governor's office to make this happen. We've worked for 30, 40 years now to make Madison a great, viable place. We know what we're doing. We know that in terms of all the evaluations that are done by livability and these other organizations in determining best places. One of the key focuses is transportation, walkability, which includes not just access for pedestrians, but also public transit. Despite our best efforts, we don't have a regional transit authority, which is going to be essential to making this work. Secondly, as long as anyone can remember here in the state of Wisconsin, municipalities have had the right to condemn property where there's a public need and a public purpose for transportation routes. And as we speak right now, the state of Wisconsin is entertaining a budget which includes deleting from our ability to condemn for transportation routes that right of way that would be used for pedestrians and for bicycles. So while we are going to try in good faith to prepare an application and we have great bicycle access here, here in Madison. We all know about our network of routes, our system. Wherever Amazon is located, we may not be able to get them bicycle access, which is one of the things they want. We may not be able to get them pedestrian access because right now, both houses of the legislature are entertaining a budget bill which includes, which has nothing to do with the budget, which includes taking away from Wisconsin municipalities the ability to develop right-of-way. So we'll be able to get roads and highways into the site, but we won't be able to necessarily get sidewalks and bicycles if condemnation is necessary. Now. Uh, we think that Madison will be highly competitive in all other areas, and we believe our existing transit and bicycling routes, as well as automobile access, gives us a great opportunity to succeed. We have a well-educated and aggressive workforce. We have the ability to reasonably, as we have done in the past, and successfully use TIF and obviously we would not be shy in this situation. But we do hope that the state will be a great partner here in helping us with this application and making it work. Any questions? I just want to point out that our economic development, uh, Matt McJuskey's here. And uh, did I see somebody else <coughs> out there? And Dan Canelli's here from the same department. Questions? Um, with a, a light rail that was proposed under Governor Doyle, would that have helped, you think, in making it more? I don't think there's any question that rail would have would have helped. And 
Um, if if we were to um, if we were successful and get to to the finals, we've had some discussions in recent years about doing a very modest rail system for the just the isthmus and the airport, sort of a Y that would have one leg going to campus, one leg uh, going out to the Aligned Energy Center, one leg going out the East Wash Corridor towards the airport. Uh, much smaller uh, than what was envisioned and failed in past years, uh, which would go all the way from Sun Prairie to, to Middleton. But that would be something that, given the density of the Amazon development of the headquarters, along with a community that's already oriented towards public transit, that is something that ought to be and could be considered. But again, we don't have the tools to make it happen because the legislature refuses to consider uh, a regional transit authority. Traditional monetary incentives like TIF, but the proposal talks about special legislation. This could be a bidding war. How far would Madison be willing to go? We, or Madison, offer? as a city, would not go any further than TIF. Now, the problem with additional tax incentives is that uh, expectations may be set so high unreasonably high because of the Foxconn deal. Um, I think I've made it very clear. I am not against those kinds of incentives, but they have to be proportional to the benefit to the community. Now, by the standards I've seen, the Foxconn agreement should not have been uh, higher than $600 million. It should have been in the range of 300 to $600 million. Uh, not the 3.2 billion. If a proposal is within those reasonable standards, and I would hope that the state, uh, given its largesse with, with Foxconn, uh, would do it here, but we certainly don't expect, we don't expect something of the magnitude of, of Foxconn, and I wouldn't want to be a party uh, to anything that, 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 that's over the top. Is there anything you've learned from the, uh, you know, this process that you would either use or not use uh, in a pitch to bring Amazon to Madison? What, what, what I've learned is, is that because something is shiny and exciting and you want it, you don't pay too much for it. Uh, a piece of gum is worth a nickel or a dime, no matter how bad you want it you're not going to pay a million dollars for it. Um, a home, uh, a home that's set on the lake will have a value of a million dollars. No matter how badly someone may want it, they're not going to pay $100 billion for it. I mean, we've got to have a sense of proportion here. And the, the thing about Foxconn is not just the deal itself but it is the disproportionate amount of money going into it that now casts a shadow over everything that we do. And, and, and you can think about it. We got all these giveaways, billions of dollars, but we're not willing to allow a local region to establish a transit system or bicycle access, which goes to quality of life, which is just, if not more important, to the business. We will have a good viable application. Off topic, but uh, I know Labor Day was floated as a possible time frame. Have you made a decision uh, no. as to whether you'll be running for governor? I said after, it's still after, we got a little time left. 
In Milwaukee, Mayor Barrett seems to express interest in putting the application too. I mean, is this Foxconn deal also going to hinder their efforts? I think Foxconn is going to hinder the efforts of every uh, possible uh, entrepreneurial development in the state, setting unreasonably high uh, expectations, and it's going to have an effect not just in Wisconsin but throughout the U.S. But because we're the one. Who, who launched this uh, disaster, uh, it's going to have a, a greater effect on us. Again, I am not opposed to having appropriate financial and reasonable financial incentives, whether it's for Foxconn in southeastern Wisconsin, Foxconn in Madison, or Amazon in Madison or Milwaukee. But I hope we understand two fundamental points here. One is it has to be reasonable. And two, these businesses, particularly Amazon, are looking for other things than the size of the check. They are looking for quality of life issues. And read through this. It permeates the document. Uh, in terms of what they're looking for in, in regards to, to uh, cultural accessibility, diversity, and obviously uh, walkability. Now, with the package together, does the Common Council have to sign off on this, or do you submit it and then they would have th to sign This is something administratively that we, we've traditionally handled. I mean, we, we're do, we do this all the time. We make these decisions. Uh, we made the decision on exact sciences, which is now in progress. Uh, we made uh, these decisions in regards to uh, RP's pasta and that cluster of businesses, and then we, we submit it to the council. And then, of course, obviously, final say is with the Board of Estimates and the council if they wish to go forward. I think this would be very exciting. I think this is a kind of company that would find Madison um, uh, a, a great home. Uh, the existence of Epic Systems uh, certainly helps, helps us in terms of the culture, uh, not just in terms of the arts, but in terms of the, the work environment. And uh, I just wish we, we could be perfect. Any questions? Is that it? Cool. Thank you. And uh, did, did I go into explaining the county maps? Uh, the map, so, so let me just explain. Our, our metro area, let me just run through it, is uh, from top to bottom, uh, Columbia, Dane, and Rock County, and to the left of ours, of us, to the, to the uh, west is Iowa County. Then what's brought in uh, when they, they, they bring in uh, what's called the, the Madison-Janesville uh, combined metro area. You add two more counties. We bring in uh, Saw County to our, our northwest, and we uh, 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 bring in Excuse me, excuse me. I said when I went from top to bottom, it's Dane. Uh, excuse me, it's 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 Columbia, Dane, and uh, Green County. It's Columbia, Dane, Green County, and then to our west, uh, Iowa County. Those four are the core. But then when you expand it to uh, make up the Madison, Janesville, Beloit, CSA, uh, you bring in uh, Rock County, uh, Bel blow us to the south, southeast, and to the northwest, bring in south. And that gives you those eight counties. And then uh, immediately uh, to, to uh, our west, excuse me, our east and northeast, uh, you've got Columbia, excuse me, Jefferson, Jefferson and Dodge. 
So what we're really talking about is two, four, six, eight counties. And, and the one thing about these counties uh, is that when you look at commute time from the center of our city to their extremities, to the, the extreme boundaries of those counties, most instances, uh, we're, we're talking no more than uh, uh, hour and a half, really, uh, an hour, really an hour. And so uh, we do a lot better than some more compact areas with nightmarish uh, highway congestion. Do they have some collaboration with uh, uh, officials from these other counties as well? You're going to have to. Well, we'll be talking to to. We'll, we'll do that through MadRep, which which encompasses uh, pretty much most of these counties that we just outlined. Our MadRep region is is really Dane and uh, seven seven of the. Uh, eight counties that, that touch on our, our borders. Is that like a standing committee or something? It's a, well, it's not a committee. It's a very active organization. Uh, think of it, about it as a regional chamber of commerce, but more focused on attracting new business than providing service to area businesses. The, the, the main core mission of MADREP is to either expand existing uh, companies here in, in the region or to attract new ones. And MadRep's been around now for about uh, seven, almost seven years. Uh, it was originally called Thrive. And we've had a great working relationship with them. Uh, they've been instrumental in helping us on the Oscar Mayer closing, uh, working with the federal government in regards to various uh, federal programs that are available to us in, in regards to dealing with plant closings. All right. Thank you.